<laughs> That's me. <laughs> Ready to go? It's nine o'clock online too. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, June 27th meeting of the Waterways Advisory Committee. Um, I guess the first thing is to have our call to order, which I am doing. How about our roll call? Sure. Uh, committee member Liptak. Here. Uh, committee member Neely. Here. Uh, committee member Quant. Here. Committee member Sanders. Here. Committee member C. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Dyke. Uh, and yeah. uh, Chair Rubinovich. Here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So um, I understand we're having remote participation today. So anyone who um, is, is, has just cause for emergency circumstances, it's written here in the agenda. Do we need remote participation? I guess members of the public can join remotely. Is that what this says too? Or is this just members of the committee? I think it only pertains to members of the committee. If 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 no members from the committee are joining uh, remotely, then public comment can't be received, okay, so except our, in person. Art stop didn't request remote participation. Did he, he, he's, he's absent. He's absent. He's absent. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Approval of the minutes, um, May twenty third minutes. Um, are there any corrections or additions or subtractions? Mm -hmm. I'm going to abstain. Um, mm -hmm. Were you here at that meeting on May 23rd? I guess the two of us will abstain. We want any corrections? Okay, with that, the minutes will be considered approved. Um, public comments time when anyone can address matters not listed in the agenda, which are in the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Is there anyone here for public wants to speak in just general public comment on items not on the agenda or not on the specific topic? Okay, moving on. Um, committee business. Uh, I have to read this statement still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, looking forward to the day when I don't have to. Um, <laughs> The uh, role of advisory committee, waterways advisory committee, is to review development projects, both public and private, which are located adjacent to creeks and waterways for consistency with the goals and policies and regulations for creekside development identified in the San Jose General Plan, Zoning Code Design Guidelines, and Citywide Creek Master Plan. While the committee does not take formal action on projects, it does provide advisory comments to the decision making body. All development projects located in Jason, the creek and water or waterway are required to be reviewed by the Waterways Advisory Committee prior to proceeding through the entitlement process. Are there any committee reports? I have one. Um, the Southeast Greenway is going to be under the ownership of the city of Santa Rosa by the end of July, according to our information. There are three creeks that go adjacent or through it. Matanzas Creek goes adjacent to it. Sierra Creek, Sierra Park Creek, and um, there's one more creek that goes through uh, it. And I'm just wondering if that might be something we consider um, as the Parks Master Plan is going to be completed. It hasn't been started yet, of course, but uh, funds are being raised and. We'll see when it starts, but uh, the creeks are going to be a consideration um, there. So I just wanted to mention that. Anything else by anyone else? Any reports? The uh, Southeast Greenway actually came up at the Board of Community Services meeting mm -hmm. yesterday, uh -huh. where a UMO understanding of mutual um, getting together a land pass, um, which the Friends Group the city and is it who else? Land right? trust. Land trust, getting everybody together and doing a little agreement that we're all working yeah. for mutual, that that's coming up, which I yeah. thought was a very good um, 
thing to There's an MOU. Yes. MOU. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I could circulate Thank you. I was just going to ask, what is the MOU? MOU. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it places a prior MOU, which involved the county parks department and the water department, water agency. So, yes, this is uh, working, just establishes a continued working relationship, which is already there, but it kind of says officially is there. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a very exciting new time, which we won't have to spend time here to talk about because most of it is park and restoration property. But uh, maybe we'll come back here one day. Yes. <clears throat> Anything else anybody wants to bring up? Okay. Department reports, item six, planning and economic development department Any reports. Well, um, yeah, I would like to suggest that everybody keep their eyes on upcoming um, agendas. We are going to start doing the tour at the board and commission tour before going to council for um, some pretty significant changes to the zoning code. Um, we're incorporating a lot of the resilient city measures, but I think it's worthwhile for people to keep tabs on that. And then I know I want to say this while we're live, um, uh, that I encourage all boards and commissions to participate in the cannery tour. Um, the second of three is scheduled today. The last one will be scheduled on August 1st. Um, I'm hoping there is room for those of us who want to go do a second tour. Staff is more than welcome. Um, we've got plenty of room today. If you guys want to come, it's at 1130. So anyway, that pretty much concludes my department report. Well, thanks for arranging that. Everybody's excited about that development. Mm -hmm. Um, I still remember John Stewart, a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. um, water department, any reports? Yes. Um, our stormwater and creeks team is happy to announce that our Colgan Phase Three restoration projects was awarded funding through the Wildlife Conservation Board um, for an additional $2 million, which will wow. complete our fundraising efforts and we're on track for construction in 2025. That is good news. Yeah, that's good going. News. Yeah. I think through the three grants for Wildlife Conservation Board, Urban Streams, and Open Space, uh, we bought it brought in about seven and a half million dollars in grants to go oh, okay. Good job. Wow. Very this is the remainder of the funds needed. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and how long has this project been? Oh my gosh. Fair question. <laughs> that is a good answer, actually. Yeah, I mean, we, we finished phase one in 2015, but it was at least 10 years prior to that. I mean, I think this was yeah. identified in the early 2000s yeah. um, originally. So we're, you know, we're past 20 years at this point. Wow, this so is really wonderful. It's yeah. really exciting to <clears throat> finish it up. And it was a real team effort um, mm -hmm. as Wildlife Conservation where we put it all together and then they came back and they changed at the 11th hour, the grant requirements and um, the staff did a wonderful job of pivoting and rewriting. Well, these projects take a long time, but they take commitment. Your, your department deserves a lot of credit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to share that we've started uh, planning for Creek Week in 2024. Um, Creek Week this year will be from September 15th to uh, Saturday, September 21st. Pretty similar to the events that we did last year, we'd like to do a nature walk, um, kind of a naturalist-led nature walk with the community. Um, of course, our underground tours that are always popular. Considering this year doing more of an open house style, we try and encourage more people to be able to enjoy it. Just give a time window where people will be able to filter through with staff kind of stationed throughout the tunnels to kind of lead people. Um, we'll be doing our Dash for Trash, which is a city employee um, event to aid in the uh, cleanup efforts. Um, a tour to Creek, which is our bike ride along Santa Rosa Creek down to Willowside. Um, last year, that was the first time we'd done it in about you know, 10 years or so. It was a fun event. And then, of course, we'll do the, uh, the Creek Lee uh, cleanup on Saturday, 20, uh, the 21st. I think those are, it. we're looking forward to another eventful and fun Creek Week. Great, any questions? Yes. yes. Well, it's, not, it's really just, a, it's a comment, which is, I was at the Smart Water Expo yesterday, okay. and it was 
great. And I spoke with a, uh, somebody from, you know, from the creeks part of that. And she knew what she was talking about. She made me do this little exercise, which was a lot of fun. Um, and I, it just, it was wonderful. And I, I wasn't the only person interested and there, you know, so congratulations. Happy, on that. Yeah. Did you interact with the storm drain model? I did interact with the sensing. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. <laughs> what about soil? Does soil belong in a storm drain? <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, last year we, so our Streets to Creeks is a regional effort from the Russian River Watershed um, group and co-permittees, um, and one of their campaigns that they've started is a Creek Protector um, book series that is trying to educate the youth and also encourage them to get out and interact with the creeks and creek trails. So last year we did an event um, with the Creeks team and the Stormwater partnered up on something called Creek um, Creek Protector Adventure Day. We brought them down and led them through a couple of different um, animal print identification along the ice banks on Santa Rosa Creek. Um, Soma State's biology department um, lent us some taxidermy herons and kingfishers, which was really cool. Um, so we're doing again this year, um, Boys and Girls Club um, is bringing probably 60 kids to that event. Uh, the public is welcome to join. Um, we're not doing as much advertisement because we're pretty close to our capacity on that with the commitment from Boys and Girls Club. But um, that's July 25th. It's on a Thursday from nine to noon. So it's another fun event that we're looking forward to doing. Yeah. Do you have any kids or you know anybody with kids? It's yeah. a really fun day. What was it called? I'm sorry. Creek Protector Adventure Day. Okay. Protector Adventure. It's a little bit of a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is there anyone from Sonoma Water? Here. I believe Chase from Sonoma Water is on Zoom, if that's mm -hmm. allowed. Yes, yes that is. Yes. Hi there, everyone. Hi there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can you see me? I can't tell if I'm on camera or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you very much. Um, Chase Takajo here from Sonoma Water, uh, work in our field operations and stream maintenance program. Um, was asked today to kind of come and just give an overview of our stream maintenance program activities uh, for the upcoming year. Um, as folks, uh, if folks are not aware, the stream maintenance program is Sonoma Water's flood protection um, program that is implemented throughout the county. Um, and our, one of our largest uh, Footprints and uh, areas of work is flood control zone 1A, which includes uh, the city of Santa Rosa. Um, so I'm just going to kind of be going through some of our planned sediment removal projects first, and then trying to touch on our vegetation projects. Um, and if folks have any questions, feel, please be, feel free to uh, reach out and, and ask them. Um, so kind of going down our sediment removal projects. Um, um, we're going to be starting off, or not starting off, we all will be having this year a, a a localized vegetation and sediment removal project on Oakmont Creek. Um, and we will be also working at the Santa Rosa Creek diversion structure um, off of Montgomery. We did start that one of the projects there this last week and cleaning out the fish ladder um, in the Santa Rosa Creek diversion structure. If folks uh, were in the area, they may have seen our crews out there. But we will also be removing gravel and material downstream of Montgomery Drive. Um, we will also be working at the Spring Creek Diversion Structure, which is off of uh, just off of Spring Creek near Annadale State Park. Um, we will also be working on Todd Lower Todd Creek. Um, we'll be doing a cattail and gravel bar removal in that area. Um, we will also be working at Matanzas Creek Reservoir this year to help uh, clear out some of the debris that has uh, accumulated around the inlet structure. Uh, we will also be doing the same type of uh, reservoir maintenance at the Spring Santa Rosa Creek Reservoir or Spring Lake. Um, and then the last set of removal project uh, we have planned for this year um, is a few gravel bar removals on Lower Santa Rosa Creek. Um, so particularly in between Willowside and Fulton Road, we'll be uh, doing two large-scale gravel bar removals there this year. 
Um, that is all I have for sediment removal. Moving into uh, vegetation management. So vegetation projects for this year, uh, we'll be working on Bellevue Wilfrid Creek, um, Brush Creek, Colgan Creek, uh, Pollen Creek, Piner Creek, Roseland Creek, this Roseland Creek, uh, Russell Creek, and a few sections of Santa Rosa Creek and Todd Creek this year. Uh, we will be working primarily on those in the urban areas of those channels and in small segments of them. Um, so not necessarily the whole channel, but isolated sections uh, that we have determined need vegetation management. Um, the other kind of large aspect just wanted to touch on as part of this three maintenance program is our all of our work that we work with the uh, stormwater, uh, the city stormwater group and help for our trash cleanups and uh, homeless encampments, uh, homeless deterrence uh, through the area. Um, so just wanted to throw out some numbers of what our crews have been uh, completing this last year. Um, and just so folks are for aware, Sonoma Water does uh, employ a full-time security guard that patrols all of our creeks and streams. And um, we also allocate um, one day per week for trash cleanup on our creeks and channels. So it is a large effort um, that we are putting towards this. Um, just to give you kind of a rough idea, um, in 2000, so last year, we removed a total of 82,000 pounds out of the flood zone 1A um, of trash. And this year, 2024, we have already removed um, just, just over 19,000 pounds of trash. Um, so we'll continue to see those numbers go up as the, as the year goes on, but it is still a, a large effort that we are taking on. Um, through our, act, through our regular maintenance activities. Um, that's kind of all I had as far as an overview of projects. Just wanna see if folks have any questions or comments on items that I've listed. Question, it's Terry Sanders. 82,000 pounds of trash being removed from the creeks in what time period? Uh, just in 22, uh, in last year, 23. Thank you. Yes. Is this trash collection be in addition to your trash collection? We have a separate crew that goes out on Tuesdays, I believe it is, Chase. Yes, it is. We work, we work together on identifying spots and we get reports from the security contractor on locations that are particularly high density in trash, but two separate crews, one city and one county. So you work in cubic, you measure in cubic yards and he's measuring in pounds, could you put them together into one? Not off the top of my head, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the trouble with cubic yards, we don't weigh our trash when we dump it. So how we estimate as we go, we know the volume of our trailer and we count trailers. There's a wide variety of averages that people have assigned to a cubic yard and pounds per trash. So. I've seen things that say 300 pounds per cubic yard. I've seen other numbers. As soon as it gets saturated, it's a whole other thing. So mm -hmm. it's difficult to compare apples to apples, but either way, there's a large volume of trash they're collecting and there's a large volume that we're collecting. Are there any questions of Chase? Uh, yeah. Thank you for your presentation, very thought provoking. You do a little, it sounded like you were working on every creek there is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. This is a busy uh, year. Any other questions or comments? Um, just another question. Thank you, Chase. What, where are you taking the trash? How much does that cost to dispose of? We have uh, dump sites at our city yard off of Stony Circle, our Stony Point um, at the Municipal Services North. Um, there's different bays. With, you know, we have vegetation, and um, there's a separate bay, uh, concrete bay for uh, encampment trash. There's a contract with ecology. It's not charged per load. I don't actually know what the overarching contract cost is, but um, the amount of trash that we bring, I don't think actually fluctuates or changes that price to the city. Last question. This trash thing is fascinating to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where I mean, is, is the trash because people are literally at the creek and dumping their stuff? Are they making the journey to dump their stuff? It, we see all of it. There's, I mean, a, a, one of the things security contracts will identify a lot of times is sometimes in an isolated, um, you know, gravel pull off that is actually the entrance to a creek trailer maintenance road. 
especially more on the outskirts of town or in county areas, people will drive up and just dump trash out the back of their car. Or we have lots of refrigerators that are piling up in our yard that get disposed of. So people dump their household trash. Um, there's also just trash that flows into the creek and then gets hung up in blackberries. So we'll go and pick stuff, you know, chip bags, things like that. And then, yeah, a large portion is from activities that are occurring right along the creek. Homeless encampments and things like that. Yeah, I haven't done an analysis, but I know my predecessor averaged somewhere up above 80% of the trash that we collect is from encampments, maybe even higher. Wow. One question for Chase, Kevin C. here. Uh, Chase, the, you mentioned vegetation management on Roseland Creek. Whereabouts on Roseland Creek? Which reaches are you going to be working on? Do you know offhand? Yeah, so we'll be working on Roseland C Creek between Stony Point and Ludwig Road. Great. Good, I live on that road, so we can't wait to see what you're doing. Fantastic. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. All good work. Okay, we're going to move on to the scheduled item for today of the design review for Meadow Creek Townhomes, 533 Bellevue Avenue. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nora Bisla, and the project before you today is for Meadow Creek Townhomes. Um, this project will require a conditional use permit, a tentative map, and reduced authority, reduced review authority design review, and is located at 533 Bellevue Avenue. The proposal consists of 62 attached townhomes in 12 two-story, five and six unit buildings. Um, the project will take place across a 4.7 acre part. 4.78 acre parcel. It will be three bedroom units ranging in size from 1500 to 1800 square feet, and there will be 190 parking spaces. And again, those are the required entitlements. The project is located just off of Bellevue Avenue in Eastern Santa Rosa. Um, it's right across from county uh, land and is located right next to L.C. Allen High School. Some brief project history. On September 4th, 2021, there was a pre-application meeting with staff. On November 9th, 2022, there was a neighborhood meeting. On November 17th, 2022, um, the Design Review Board reviewed the conceptual plans for the project and they provided comments. Some of these comments included um, making sure the side elevations have more visual interest so that uh, there is equal architecture all around and embracing the nearby Colgan Creek, blending the creek area into the neighborhood. On April 19th, 2023, the project application and materials were submitted to the Planning and Economic Development Department. And today, here we are in front of the Waterways Advisory Committee for a conceptual review. Here's a site plan located between Burgess and Common Way. The general plan land use designation is medium density residential, which allows development from eight to 18 units per acre. And the zoning is mixed. Um, there is a portion of the site that is R313, which is consistent with the general plan, and there is a portion of the site which is R16, which is not consistent. However, um, the implementing zoning district for medium density residential is R313, and the density and the use is consistent with both of these zoning districts. And is also within the Roseland priority development area. Um, the applicant provided three creek cross sections located at the highlighted areas you see here. Um, there is about a 30 foot, sorry, I believe it's a, I completely forgot my numbers, um, but there is a 30 foot distance requirement from the top of bank uh, required by the zoning code. And 
all of the proposed development um, and structures are outside of the 30 foot setback. Here's a preliminary landscape plan. And much of the plants uh, proposed for use are low water use. The Planning and Economic Development Department requests that the Waterways Advisory Committee provides comments for the Meadow Creek, Meadow Creek Townhomes project proposed at 533 Bellevue Avenue. And for any questions or comments, this is my contact information. And that is my presentation. Thank okay. you. Uh, I believe the applicant has a presentation as well, which I can get that up on the screen. Clarifying question. I thought it was 50 feet, not 30 feet. Was that top of bank, middle of feet? So feet different? it is 50 feet. However, our zoning code also allows for um, new developments that are adjacent to existing developments, which took place before 2004, to um, conform to the 30 foot setback that was in the old zoning code before 2004. And uh, the uh, subdivision right next to this one uh, adheres to 30 foot setback, not 50. Um, I just have one question before yeah. we go on to the applicant. In the design review board's comments, it talks about them defining the project to be embracing the creek. Mm -hmm. Has the project plan been revised since then? Or are we seeing what was presented to the design review board? Do you know? The plans have been revised, yeah. yeah. Um, they're there was a initial plan um, since then that had the homes facing with the front door facing the creek. Um, but for safety reasons, staff saw some concerns. So we had asked them to pull back the homes a little bit. And so now on the plan, um, there is a gate and an access to the creek, but the homes are set back. And also um, to meet that setback, there's no structures, no homes being built right up against the creek. Do they face the creek still though? They the entryways? They do not. That's, um, there's gonna be a lot of questions, sorry, to start. Mm -hmm. Why don't we hear from the applicant that we can mm -hmm. have everybody participate. Welcome. First of all, yeah, I'm Jay Ryder, oh. Ryder Homes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I thought you were on the this is not Zoom. <laughs> this is Savannah Ryder. Mm -hmm. uh, Savannah will, will take the presentation and we'll go through it first. Our presentation is pretty similar to the one you just saw. Um, you can go to the next one. Uh, so we've been around since 1959. Excuse me, I'm having a hard time yeah. hearing you. Oh, um, so our presentation is pretty similar to the one you just saw, um, but I'm going to go through it. Um, this is, so we've been around since 1959. Um, we've been building in Santa Rosa for um, quite a long time. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, and we've built over 500 homes in Santa Rosa. Um, so we're pretty familiar with the community um, in my building here. Um, the next one. Um, a lot of our homeowners are pretty like happy with the quality of houses that we build. Um, that's kind of what our niche is. is over like the public builders and some of the other builders in the areas, we build quality um, houses versus like something that's more on the lower end. Um, we focus more on that. Uh, next, uh, this is the neighborhood context map, um, which you already saw. So we're next to the Elsie Allen High School. Um, we're also right next to 78 houses we just finished um, that was called Meadow Creek. So this is kind of like an extension to go with those uh, houses. Uh, next. Um, so this is the site. Um, so you can see like our other project um, back there in one of the photos opposite of the site. Um, and then these are from kind of from every angle looking at it. Um, go next. 
Um, and so we're looking um, to kind of be, reach like a more economically priced segment of the market with these townhouses. Um, and so uh, it's something that currently isn't um, on the market in Santa Rosa. Um, so we wanted to make that available to that um, price segmentation. Next. Um, this is our tentative map. Um, the next one. And this is our uh, landscape plan. Um, and we have a central park in the middle, which I believe is on the next slide. Um, so we have this big central park, um, which is uh, one of the things we really wanted to do for this project um, and kind of ties it all together um, to have this like nice green open space. Um, next. Um, yeah, and then all these uh, pictures um, that you've seen in the backgrounds of the slides are renderings from our architect of what the proposed uh, elevations and um, kind of what we're envisioning for the project, what's been submitted. Would you mind talking a little bit about how the project relates to the creek? In other words, access to the creek um, in terms of uh, the way the buildings are oriented and the creek um, and how that central park area relates to the creek. So we can kind of get a sense of that interface. Well, when we first submitted the project, um, we didn't know about the, the creek setback. So we actually had uh, some of the front elevations facing the creek with um, a relatively small setback. Um, the city came up with the comments about safety, but the bigger one for us was the setback. So we um, flipped the road and the, the um, structures so that now um, there's a, some parking along the creek um, setback and you know just an access road in. So most of the homes now, the front faces kind of a paseo or you can go to back to that side by side. Yeah, I guess that's that favorite. So originally we had the, the fronts kind of face the other way. So uh, because of the setback, we flipped them. So now uh, you see that we have parking along the creek side with some landscaping. I can pull up the um, the cross section sheet that has it. And, uh, so yes, you, the front of the houses is now facing the other way. So from the creek, what you'll see is um, the buildings are set back a ways. There's some landscaping, parking, drive, and I guess the garages and the back elevation of the house. So there's a creek path there. There is, yes. And how would I get there if I were living under development? The under the path, there's, well, there's a uh, tubular steel wrought iron type fence that we're providing along that interface for uh, safety reasons. There's going to be a gate with pedestrian access to that. One gate? Um, along this side, we're proposing one gate. And that is, um, how high is the fence? I'm sorry, I don't mean to dominate, but no new questions. It's six feet. It's six foot fence. Yes. See through. Yes. So there's one game. How does that relate to your central park area? I mean, can, if you're at the park, can you walk well, directly park, to the gate and get onto the creek? Well, there's pedestrian uh, walkways all through there from the park through the neighborhood to the, to the gate. Does it line up with the park? But if you look at the, or if you go to the site, just curious how access is, of course, what I'm asking about. Right. Yeah, see where it says parcel F, that's the park site. And you can see there's a sidewalk going all the way to. And where's the gate? Well, right now, those <laughs> icons are um, in the middle of it. There you go. So you walk across the walkway, and there'll be a gate along that side. This particular slide doesn't show where the gate is. If you go to the landscape plan, Okay, um, others, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to visualize this in my head because um, the drawings you provided, I don't think were tailored for this particular meeting, but we're all about the creek. So if I am a resident, uh, first of all, what is the creek frontage for your property? How many feet approximately? Uh, 
100 yards? Yeah, probably about. And if I am um, walking the creek trail and I look towards your property, when the growth has matured, what will I see? I'm on the creek trail. Help me visualize this. Well, you'll see those plantings and trees along. Uh -huh. uh, the, you know, as you're walking along the trail, there will be a see-through wrought iron fence. You'll see all that landscaping. So, so first, there. closest to the creek trail would be your fence. Yes. Which is a six foot black tubular fence, kind of like what's along Prince Memorial Greenway, I would assume. Uh, not familiar. Yeah, with flat it. black uh, tubular metal it's goes, black, goes up in eight foot fence. sections. Six foot. No spikes on the top. No spikes. <laughs> um, so that's the closest to the creek. And then it'll be your landscaping, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And then what's behind the There's landscaping? Parking and. And is that open driveway. parking or walled parking? What do you mean by wall? Is it a carport? Is no, it, no, it's, it's open. just it's open, open parking. Yes. Great. So that's what I'd see if I was on the creek trail. Yes. Now I'm on your property. The When would I, uh, as a resident, have eyes on the creek, which is a term we use an awful lot in this meeting? Well, anywhere along there, uh, you know, if you're anywhere along that street and in the parking area, you're basically looking through the right iron fence. Uh, the, some of those plantings, there's some trees, but there's some low plantings that'll be looking right across the creek. Okay, so yeah. I'd be parking my car, I'd be able to look into the creek. Yep. I'm parking my car, I'd be able to look over the other parked cars, but as far as, um, Truly being part with the creek, that's not happening. There's the, the parking, it's cars. It's a mm -hmm. it's a parking lot essentially. Well, along there, yes. But um, but yeah, but you when you park your car, you're looking right across the creek, you'll be able to see the cars on Bellevue Avenue. So yeah. Right now there there, yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Right now there's a wooden fence along there i think well there's the there's bellevue i think there's then there's a paved trail along bellevue if i remember right and then the creek and then there's a little dirt path and a little uh there's a split rail fence. split split rail so, thank you i was looking for that term our our fence will be behind the split rail. okay does the split rail remain yes okay all right so you're not touching anything from no. that split rail over to the creek okay all right good and then are there windows on the, you said the back side of the, of the units will face the creek. Are there windows that look out on the creek? Yes. S but small windows? Yeah, there's, there's upstairs windows that will be looking out on the creek. Yes. Okay. All right. And are they large? Like we, we always talk about eyes on the creek, as Carol mentioned. And, and the master so bedroom is on that side. So okay. Be, so there's some big windows looking back that way. Okay. All right. Thanks. And that would be about maybe 30 feet, the, the closed building two and building one that would be about 30 feet off of the property line and the creek? No, that's about um, that's over 50 feet. Over 50 feet. Yeah, Terry. Um, to the property line, I should say. Yeah. A few questions. Um, is there lighting, any sort of lighting that's going to be on that side that... Uh, there are some. We don't. I don't have the lighting plan yet, but um, but yeah, there will be some lights, all, you know, along that uh, parking area. And what's the distance between the structure and the fence? Uh, well, yeah, that was a slide that actually it's been the creek across the, the rear of the structure. Um. Well, this does show. Oh yeah, it does show fifty-two feet to the property line, and the fence is right on the property line. Okay. And that there are two stories. Uh, yes. Sure. Okay. Um, do you do you remember what the safety concerns were? Why? Because you said that the doors were facing the creek, and now they're facing the other way. And what do you remember? What the that, safety concerns? That was from. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, the whole that was from planning stuff, just um, that the 
all of the front doors were facing the creek and then the parking was on the other side. Um, and we figured if you come home at night, you park your car, you have to walk along adjacent to the creek um, without really a buffer uh, to get to your door, um, besides the fence, of course. Um, but so we requested that they either push back or change the orientation. I, I don't think I understood. Would you yeah. repeat that? Because now if you park there mm -hmm. at night, you have to cross the street and walk around to the front of the house. And you're in the same walking. That, that's well, I mean, first yeah, of so, all, you're you're not you're probably parking in your garage, or that that was the intent. Well, so this is more like guest parking. Guest parking. This is guest parking. Yeah, okay. Oh. Okay. But yes. if you live in the unit and it has a door toward the street, there would you go necessarily to the garage or just park in front of your unit? I don't know. Well, it's, it is intended to be guest parking. What those those spaces and you, know, you would the owner, I assume, would park in the garage and walk right in the house. Yeah. And I guess my last question is: Are there any sort of deed restrictions to purchase? I mean, can you can someone come in there and buy six of them and rent them out? Um, there are no restrictions to that in that regard. Um, it, but we try to restrict that. It's, it's usually in our CCNRs that they're owner occupied. Usually, in CC. Well, I mean, I can't prevent an owner from from deciding to rent. Okay, but we intend to sell to owner occupants. Yeah, please, Mark. Will the planting serve to to block the view of the cars, or is that two no. different things? The, the, okay. the planting won't necessarily block the view of the cars. It's, okay. A lot of it's low shrubs and grasses, and right. Um, I think the. Landscape architect sent you guys something in that regard, but um, the but there are some trees, yeah, along that street. Okay, and it's native vegetation or ornamental or combination. Well, it's um, I believe it's native uh, low water use type mm -hmm. vegetation. Some of which you would see in the creek area. We're trying to make it all blend in. Other questions? I just have a general comment, which is. I'm having a very hard time visualizing um, the area along the creek. Is your um, landscape architect or consultant available on the call? Do you know? Yes, she she can be called. Um, if you have any questions for the landscape consultant, he's going. Do you have to call and I get her on? Call for you. Yeah. Okay. And I did get a list of suggested plantings. Yes. Um, Those are sent over from the landscape. Yeah, and I don't know if everyone got them no. or not. So I'm going to picture here if that, if that helps at all. That uh, does help. Okay. Um, and I think um, one of the questions I had is the, the picture shows that just a dirt trail along that split rail fence. Is there is the city planning on developing that trail any further? Will it ever be paved or you just got like a million bucks for them? Is that for this, this no, reach? Not for that not reach. No, oh, okay. <laughs> that's our phase. Yeah. That's yeah. our phase one creek. that was completed in 2015. I think someone mentioned there is a paved pathway in between Bellevue and the creek and the Splitwell fence to the south. To the north is just an unpaved pathway along the north side of the creek that has we have no plans to pave that. That's and that's what I got a picture of here. And I, like I'll ride my mountain bike along that unpaved trail, but I I imagine there's not a lot of foot traffic. The foot traffic probably goes along Bellevue on the other side of the creek, and there's there's a heavy tree line there. So you well, that is correct. You can't, I, I very rarely see anybody. Right, you can't really. You probably a lot of people walking along Bellevue are not going to be looking through and mm -hmm. at, at at the at this project because it's really too far away and separated by a lot of trees. If they were walking on the north side on the dirt trail, then you're, you'd be right adjacent to the project. Uh, and I'm thinking about that because it sounds like your original plan was what we often envision here yeah. in this committee, which is the front door is on the creek. And so when people are walking along the creek, they have this feeling of presence of other people mm -hmm. and, and a feeling of safety that results from that. Um, but we often, prefer that when there's a paved trail that gets a lot of traffic. In this case, it's only a dirt trail that I imagine doesn't get that much traffic. It gets enough traffic to keep the trail going um, and keep it from being overgrown, but I imagine it doesn't get as much traffic as many 
of the paved trails along the creeks. So, Vic, did you have a question? I have a comment. Well, um, and a question. Yeah, I think our comments will come in a second, but I wonder if you just want to do questions for the Okay, so um, I'm I'm still graph. I'm still trying to understand why the front door. If I'm a resident, I'm I'm likely to pull into the garage. I'm not going to use my front door, correct? So, so now I'm trying. To, the people who are going to use the front door are in fact the guests, I believe. Yes. Um. So get, So I, now I'm I'm really confused about the flip. Um. With puts you know so I'm, I'm parking in the parking space there close to the fence, which is adjacent to the trail, which is next to the creek. Um, but then I have to walk, I have to cross the street and walk around the building to get to the front door. And I'm a guest and I may or may not know that that's what I'm supposed to do. But in any event, the the front door is more <laughs> now seems to be hidden. And it also it offer, doesn't offer the, the eyes on the creek that you would have as the owners inside the house looking out the door at your guests coming in. So it, it's just, I, and I, so I guess the question is what is, so one question is, did you think about that? And the other question is. Well, in the original design, yes, that's how we had it, but we had to change it anyway because the, it was the setback. Uh, you know, we were, we were, within the setback. So we had to flip it um, to get the buildings out of the setback. Mm. Um, I have a question. I'm sorry, Vic, I don't mean to interrupt. Well, and so the, so the, the question, the other question is, what is the, um, and, and maybe this, I don't know, maybe this needs to be in like when people make their proposal, what is, what is the project's thought about the creek? <laughs> the creek is a nice amenity and feature um, that you know, this that the residents will have access to, and they'll be able to get you out and see it. It's not an amenity that you necessarily use and it's, it's something to be you know when you walk along these trails and you enjoy it but I, you know I, other than that I don't I'm not sure what, what more I, I think what would, would be you know if we were all kings of the forest and could you know <laughs> twinkle our nose and make it happen you know with 82,000 pounds of trash being dumped into the creeks it's always just a great idea to have more people interfacing and seeing the creek on a, as a daily part of their existence in any project along the creek, right? Yeah. As opposed to it being, you know, that thing out there by the parking lot, uh, I guess parking that I really don't interface with at all, you know? And so that's more of a comment. I, I apologize. I know we're trying to, trying to keep the questions. It's hard to keep them separate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have one question for you, and I know Carol has a question too. Is the gate going to be locked? You know? Um, I think we would intend to lock it so that people walking along the trail can't just decide to come in. This is another aspect of this because I don't see how the project engages the creek. Um, well, I'm violating my own principle. How <laughs> many? I didn't say that. I know this is for safety reasons. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And I kind of thought this might come up that you would want yeah. either no wrought iron fence or, um, or an unlocked gate. Yeah, but, it, it, it goes yeah, back. I'm sorry. Safe, but this is a safety issue. Yeah, this goes back to conversations that we've had on other projects, so you should know that. And by the way, there has been homeless people in the creek. So that's part of our safety. Okay. Sorry to violate my principles, but please, yeah. question. So don't feel picked on. Yeah. These are the questions we ask of every project, be it a commercial project, a residential project. Um, we've gotten down to the nits and the grits of what are you doing for the monarch butterfly specifically? So, so far you've actually gotten a 
Um, my question is um, as much to you as a developer and the city in looking at the um, overview map, is this one of many infill projects? Is this, uh, uh, there are still open fields, whatever you do, because the last project, your last project was 10 years ago or so, uh, no, the previous. We just built the 78 homes. On the creek? Yeah. Uh, well, not on the creek. Uh, across the street from this. Just north? Just north, yeah. okay. But, but not on the creek. No. Um, there are several more projects going in over the next 10 years or so. I assume more projects on the creek. So whatever you do kind of sets the precedent for the rest of the infill projects. And unfortunately for you, that means we possibly will screw down a little tighter because you're setting the new bar. Okay. And um, again, the visuals that... I'm being provided with, do not give me enough information to say, gee, I feel really good about this. I feel really fuzzy about this. Oh, that was a comment, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you're in the very next one. We might be done with questions for this afternoon, or it's just a straight question. We could... well, I guess I want probably have one more to just to clarify. So, um, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like the city priorities for safety are at little at odds with our eyes on the creek. So I, I won't I'll try not to comment about that yet. Um, what kept you from just being able to um, shift the buildings back a bit to be out of the setback, but keep the eyes on the creek? Was well, we would lose probably we would lose some of those units. Um, there's not enough. I, I don't. You know, we have to have access to the garages. If we pull them back, I thought we wouldn't have room to. No, so then the road would be on the other, where we're looking here, the road, what is it? C Street would be on the right of that bank of buildings. Is that right? So it would have, I almost like to walk up and <laughs> that's okay. So this would have been moved over here. Well, and we would have had to pull the buildings back anyway. Uh -huh. But originally, the street was on the other side when um, the buildings were closer to it. We'd have to pull it back. There wouldn't be room for that street on the side. We'd probably lose that full road. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, question. Is the window, you said that the master bedrooms are, are on the back side. Yes. Of those. Is, the, is the window sort of like a feature window that well, maybe somebody might want to sit and gaze out of mm -hmm. while they're in their bedrooms? You can't put the plans in well, let's see if we have these renderings. And I'm sure you get it that, you know, Eyes on the Creek helps with, you know, deterring the homeless that are using it. Okay, which one are you bringing up so we can bring it up? Well, let's see. I don't think it's rendering. I mean, it would be nice if that, if that were feature. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if you can't throw a balcony back there, which would be awesome to, to, to have to build your house, but, uh, you know, it's a way to get, you know, people interfacing with the creek is always, always a plus. And, and while you're looking, uh, do the units come with one unit provided parking? I assume it's underneath the unit, two units, yeah. depending on how well, many. It's a two-car garage. Two-car garage for every single unit. Yes. And then will there be street parking? Um you show street parking there's, within the complex as well? Well, there's 190 spaces minus the 124 that are within garages. So around the site, there's, you know, not just these, but there's some on the other side over there. So I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is you assume two cars per unit. Um, yes. And then... How much will about, uh, that parking lot along the creek be used for parking? How much will it truly be overflow and open visually a little bit inviting to go? Well, down overall the ratio is, I think, about two and a half. Might be longer than that, but I want to say two and a half spaces per unit total. And that includes the two garage spaces. Yes. So there's an additional half space per unit. 
on the street parking and on that back creek side. Uh, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mark? So how close is the road to the creek? It's within that 30 foot setback, correct? Uh, well, if you go back to that thing, it shows the. Well, thank you. 52 feet to the property line, but there's a blue line here. It's the top of the bank is what set back mm -hmm. is. Okay. And will there be parking on both sides of the street or just on one side of the street? I'm not sure how wide the road is. So. Uh, well, the, the street's 26 feet mm -hmm. wide, <clears throat> but you can't really park along it. <laughs> uh, it comes. So the you know, the spaces are, are where the parking is. You can't park within that streetway. So if you go to the last slide, which is questions, there's a car parked in there. That's not an actual parking place. See the uh, white SUV? Well, I guess you're right. It's not. Well, actually, I don't know, because that's on the street coming off of uh, Burgess. If you go back to the side, it might be a space Is there a stormwater plan for this project yet, or is that still down the road? The street there is only 24 feet wide, so no. I'm sorry, what, what was the question? What was the question? <laughs> stormwater, stormwater. stormwater plan. It's already been done, or that's going to be done? No, there's a, there's a, drain, a grading and drainage plan. Okay. Uh, all stormwater is directed into scroll up. Mm -hmm. um, the other way. No, the other way. From the bottom of that page. So, um, so there's a basin. See this uh, retention area? Stormwater yeah. retention area. All the stormwater is goes into that stormwater treatment area. And it, then it goes into the 48-inch storm drain pipe that's already there that outflows in the street. Mm -hmm. And if I can interject, part of the project review includes a pretty uh, in-depth view of that. Our water department right. reviews the stormwater exactly. plant, yeah. and our en engineering development services also weighs in. So we've got mm -hmm. a lot of eyes on that. Right. I also want to interject and let everybody know that we've got no more than an hour left. Um, so we, we're going to need to to end the meeting by 11 today. Yes. So just keep that in mind as you go on. I, I have a question. Um, the street, is the street at all in the creek setback? Or is the street setback exclude, excuse me, is the street, yeah, in the well, creek setback? The parking, is, the parking spaces and maybe part of the streetway could be in the setback. So the parking know. spaces are in the creek setback? Yes. No, that, and by the way, the project next to us, which was which, which was just developed, Colton Village, they actually have buildings within the setback and they have the entire roadway. I would like the staff to review whether this is, complies with the, the codes. That's part of our, that's the process that we're in right now of reviewing all, all of the projects. So this is really a concept review we're looking for based on this concept of the development we're looking for the committee's recommendations and i'm i'm making some notes and i'm hearing some and i'll i'll, I'll finalize those i'm hoping actually trevor Benovich, so that you could summarize the them purpose to the buildings, not to the well my understanding place. is that Creek setback excludes buildings and streets. And we will verify all of that through the okay. review process. It's pretty but, far along, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, you know, I hope they know what all the codes are yeah. and mm -hmm. policies. But anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we go to the, I think we've already gotten into our opinion or <laughs> viewpoint or recommendation phase, but Terry, you want to start out? with just sort of comments, comments. Um, yeah, I think technically we're supposed to open it and close public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Thank you. Uh, are there public comments? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so people out of the public for um, 
Thanks for keeping me on yeah. target here. <laughs> Thanks. Terry? Um, just looking at the project, uh, it, it, you know, I always like to use the analogy of Arcane Force because I really love the Wizard of Oz. Um, it would it would interface a lot more with the creek as it stands as it looks now. It seems as though the project you know is here and the creek is somewhere behind it, and there's not a lot of interface. And that may be because of the safety issues that the city uh, imposed on it. Because it sounds like your original plan had that element and it would be great if somehow you know i don't you know definitely above my pay grade if there would be a way to uh make it uh, so that that the creek integration is a little more seamless not needing to stroll down a long parking lot to get to a small gate uh that may be locked if there's some way to increase that interface it would be really great because as Carol uh, says, and I agree is that, you know, as soon as we start setting the, the benchmark, the standard, you know, if the standard were, man, that there, there were just balconies and, you know, this, this great interface between the Creek and the structures and the development, then every other development is gonna follow suit. If every development has the Creek as almost an afterthought behind their development, that's gonna be the standard moving forward. So, you know, I guess fortunately I am not the king of the forest, but that would be <laughs> that would be my my suggestion. That's my comment. Thank Other than that, I mean, it seems like a great project. It's, you know, Thank you, Terry. It definitely fills a need in our community. Um, just following up, really, on what Terry said, it's um, the the what well, I think what we we are hoping for in this committee is um, to see that the creeks and whosoever project comes through, that the creek is an asset and like valuable, that it's therefore worked into the, the design, the proposed design of the development. And, and we, don't, we don't actually see that. I don't see that, I should say. I need to speak for myself uh, yet. And I, you know, and I'm sorry, I missed the first round because I might've seen it in when, you know, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, right now it, it is, it isn't treated as an asset. I just have a question. If I, if we got rid of the fence, does that make a difference? I don't know. You tell me, is it, is the Creek an asset? It really is the question. And, and how is it an asset? And so what is it that you're doing to ensure that this project, Meadow Creek townhomes, um, really feels the creek is an important part. It's like, a, like people are gonna want those, particularly those townhomes that are along the creek and, and that the people who aren't along the creek are gonna, be, are gonna be drawn there because of the landscaping and the, the pedestrian zones. And like, that's, I think, what we're looking for, uh, what I'm looking for in my interpretation of what it is that we're doing mm -hmm. on Waterways Advisory. Kevin? I imagine we are the worst nightmare for a developer <laughs> because the city is saying one thing and the Waterways Advisory Committee is saying another thing. I think what we have talked about a lot in this committee is promoting development along the creek that, that makes the creek an integral part of each of those developments, sort of getting heading toward the model of if you've been to San Luis Obispo, and you, there you, we have restaurants and shops along the creek and recognizing this is just residential. But uh, if you go to Ashland, Oregon, for example, there's a little part of their the, the main creek downtown that has restaurants and developments on it. And then further up, there are more. And the, well, I've seen limited parts of further up, but it seems like there are houses that face the creek. So it's it, it promotes a feeling of hey, it's safe for our kids to get out and play in the creek. It's safe for us to walk along the creek. So we are, in this committee, have expressed often a desire to move toward that model throughout the city. And so the Creekside development, that, there were, that, that a tour of which will happen later today, 
is so nice. Uh, what did I say? The creek said the cannery, um, because the the living rooms of those units look out on the creek, and there's a fence like yours, which I think is perfect because you can see through it. Um, but because you can see through it right on the creek and right onto the trail, it really provides some more a feeling of presence on the creek, eyes on the creek. Um, It's like if we had a whole bunch of big box stores along the creek that just have a solid cinder block wall and no windows, you walk along there, you don't feel very safe because you know that nobody on the other side of that wall can actually see you. So we're always promoting that. So where I think it's unfortunate is the city had one priority on safety and then we have another priority, which is I know, really tough for the developers. I would, I just wonder a couple of things if we could, um, somehow get written into, into whatever document it is we look at for determining safety, if we could also say, hey, heads up, we also have this priority of eyes on the creek, if that happens to be adjacent to the creek. I was wondering about the safety. Final comment is I was wondering about the safety because I li lived in a very similar complex where people drive in, they drive right into the garage and there's a door between the garage and the living space. And they don't usually, very few people use the front door. So to me, if, the, if, the, if, they were, if this was situated as you originally designed it and people could drive in the backside, I think then they, well, yes, you, if you were a guest, you might have to walk from the parking all the way around. If you, well, no, no, you wouldn't because you would, oh, you wanted to avoid walking in the front door. People don't use the front door. I guess it's, it's the bottom line in the complex in which I used. It was so rare you'd see anybody go in their front, front door ever. They drove in the garage and, and got into the house that way. So I would think the front door access on the creek would not be a problem as you had originally designed it. And I realized then we still have to deal with the setback, but um, I'm sorry that it actually got changed. I wish we could have dealt with the setback and kept those front doors and that presence on the creek. So, thank you. Carol. With the information I have, and I'm looking at the uh, planting list that Noor provided, um, who's suggesting that the planting along the creek would be valley oak, red bud, manzanita, California roses, rock rose, deer grass, sedges, and rushes, all good stuff, all stuff we like to hear. But as long as it is essentially a parking lot, and I have a feeling there will be cars there because, full disclaimer, mm -hmm. there are two people who live in my house. We have three cars. Mm -hmm. um, this will be resident, yeah, shocking, I know, it's bad. We also have like five bicycles, um, but this will be a parking strip. It will not be eyes on the creek. Nobody's going to go have a picnic um, amongst the Valley Oaks and Redbud. Um, the current plan I cannot visualize as being an asset to the creek or the creek as being an asset to your project. I don't know what the solution is. You're trying to get an awful lot of people living in this space with their cars, which I can appreciate, but we're here to put everything through the lens of the creek. <clears throat> and I pretty much just want to reiterate what others have said. There doesn't seem to be much of a recognition of the creek as an amenity or any attempt to kind of fold it into the, into the community. Um, having a road that close, especially if you're seeing the first, the first thing you see when you're looking, so you're walking on the creek and you look and there's a line of cars. And who knows how long those cars have been sitting there. I mean, it will become basically a parking lot. There's people, as Carol was saying, you know, who maybe their garage is full of stuff and they got to park their car out on the street or whatever. So it just seems like there's a, a kind of a lack of, of a recognition of the creek, and that's something that we're supposed to pay attention to. So, and I like Kevin. It's unfortunate the city, you know, planning says one thing, and that's goes opposite of what we want. But so be it. The project next to us, Colvin Village, was just developed mm -hmm. uh, in, with a similar sort of interface. Mm -hmm. Was this committee not around when they came to the I wonder if we saw that one. I don't. I don't. Not recall. since I've been here. Yeah, we've seen yeah. that one, yeah. Recently? Yeah. Yeah, because technically they'd be setting a precedent since they just, you know, 
Mm -hmm. I would love to know. And they, have, they actually have buildings within the setback at the far oh, end. Really? Yeah. 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 So, could we? Uh, and it may very well can, we here. Here. About, yeah. can I interject on yeah. that? If we could please talk about that as a separate project. Sure. If a mistake was well, made, it wouldn't be precedent set setting. For, for it, if, if there's a mistake yeah. made there, it would not set a precedent. But I'm going to ask the board, the committee, if we can get some suggestions from you that would make this mm -hmm. um, a, not a, a, we're getting a real key, clean, a clear picture of what your thoughts are. I But if you can make some suggestions to get there, like removing the fence, relocating mm -hmm. the parking, putting furniture along the creek, um, you know, flipping the homes back around. I, that's what we're here for, is to get your suggestions. Your opinion is crystal clear right now. So um, I have well, no we can finish. So I, I can't make suggestions necessarily. If I had one suggestion, it'd be go back to the original design. And that's it. But but I'm not an expert in and so... That's it. Right. And and I want to point out that the, the, the developer has, a, um, they have to meet a certain density over there. And they're developing right at the midpoint of, of that medium density residential. And that's where they need to be. So they really can't lose units. Well, and, and so, by the way, that setback that you talked about, if it includes streets. It, um, does, it the, the zoning code does happens. not, the zoning code uh, does not. I just ch checked the code, and it does not allow driveway streets or parking lots within the required, in this case, 30-foot setback. It does or does not? Does It does not allow them within the 30-foot okay, setback. Again, Golden Village, then, right? I, and again, I, I don't know that one. We can go look at that and see what happened, but the project before the committee today is, is this one, 533 Bellevue. And we can do other checks. So what I'm looking, really hoping for is that the, the committee can give us some suggestions. We'll look at those suggestions and we will report back out to the decision makers about those suggestions and why or why not they couldn't be met or, and, and that'll be up to the developer as well. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, oh, excuse, okay. Go ahead. What we're looking at right now, does it meet 30 feet setback to. I, I am not as familiar with the plans. I saw the 30 foot setback yesterday and I don't know. I can't remember if it includes the parking area or not. It does. It does include the, meaning it's, 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 it, it's in the setback. So there's going to be some design changes. Mm -hmm. So again, there, there's a conception. This is a conceptual plan. Look at this as it's a concept. We're building these homes and we know that we want it to, you know, embrace the, the Creek. We know that the, the Creek as an amenity and, and yeah, we're, we're getting that. Um, but help us get there, help the developer get there. Well, this is challenging. Um, thank you for the challenge. It's actually kind of interesting um, and not easy for us to do that. And I'm wondering if the design review board had done some, uh, something similar since they're more on the design end of things. But um, I think what you're hearing is the residences being closer to the creek with windows facing the creek and with a the fence, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't have a problem with a fence, but I think, you know, uh, gates um, that are more than just one, um, allowing people access without locks on the gates. And even if I were, if it were me, I would love to have a little place for a picnic near the creek. I don't know. You know, like a little buffer okay. that would have uh, picnic tables or mm -hmm. something that would kind of bind the development Seating, uh, something itself. that invites the people into the space that's adjacent. Into the, yeah. adjacent to the people creek. out of their mm -hmm. cars. And it can have a fence. I don't know. I don't yeah, feel could about have that, a fence. But, um, yeah. but something a little more welcoming people to the creek itself from the development, because it is an amenity. I think you agreed to that as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Uh, I'm not a designer, so I'll stop there. Anybody else have any suggestions? <laughs> To, um, to keep the same number of parking spaces, not garage spaces, parking spaces, um, I don't see where else they could go if they weren't there with the current design. 
this is a puzzle whose pieces I do not know how to reassemble given the information I came in with, which was minimal. I couldn't understand your plans. That's why I was asking follow-up questions. And now to be told, hey, you got 45 minutes and you're out of here to come up with answers. I, not answers, just suggestions. And it doesn't have to be specific design suggestions, but something that I heard was, you know, about the, the window overlooking the master bedroom windows. I also heard a balcony. I, I mean, that gets eyes on the creek. I've uh, heard about the planting. Um, and it seems to me like maybe low shrubs and tall trees. So we have similar when you're coming out of a drive aisle, you don't have something blocking your view. Um, we've heard, you know, there's concerns about parking. There's a two and a half space. It, maybe we condition so that there's a two and a half space per unit, I think, uh, requirement. Maybe, maybe there's a, uh, a recommendation the, the review authority add a condition of approval or staff add a condition of approval that there is no storage allowed in parking or garages that would preclude parking in garages. There's things like, you know, that, that. and design features. Um, you know, I do this. I do, I've been doing this since 2006. So I have a lot of suggestions, but, and I think that they would achieve it. But I think that this committee really is looking at that creek I'm hearing keep the gate open and at the cannery site, they're keeping the gate open and unlocked during daylight hours and they're closing at night. If I lived in one of those units, I would want it closed at night. Okay. But maybe there's a parking area. Maybe there's an area, you know, right in the center of the parking area that has a gate on the other side and yet it's not paved in it or yeah. And it has some benches. So it's, so if you see that, and I mean, I, I, I'll let you weigh in on the fence, but I think that there's a lot of options to just your thoughts um, is, and we can work with your thoughts to get to design, but if you have suggestions, they're great. Thank you, Sue. Others? There are a lot of good ideas right here. <laughs> yeah, Sue, write all those ideas you just made. I'm just taking all, them off my notes. We're like, yeah, all, sounds all good. Those have yeah. already come up from you all, though. I mean, I've heard that. So if there's more. The uh, gate could be coded rather than locked so that residents had access. Like there well, are any number of it. Making the creek an amenity rather than a afterthought mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. we're all about that people say oh my god i live right on the creek mm -hmm. yeah. because the creek's going to get better right kyle right sorry is a lot better than it was <laughs> any other suggestions as he's asking us for um, course, suggestions any yeah. specifics yeah. that you would like to add to what we've already heard and talked about can i make a comment I'm sorry. May I make a comment? Oh, I didn't too? know you were wanting to. Uh, well, I just I wasn't entirely sure about the, sure. the process. Of course you can. I just I did want to address the safety issue and just in that this stretch of creek among all the stretches in town is one where we really don't experience any encampments and it's mm -hmm. low to know. It's not an area where I mean we're doing much trash cleanup compared to other sections of town. There's a lot of foot traffic to LCL and high school. Um, you know, is in an area that we're trying to really encourage foot traffic. We're trying to get people along Colgan Creek and eventually up to the Hearn Hub. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to get more people on the creek, um, but in terms of safety concerns, which are, are very real, I just wanted to say our experience on that section of is that it's a, it's a pretty safe stretch of creek. Yeah. Thank you. So piggyback off of Claire's comments, um, I believe, and I know we're not talking about the development adjacent. I don't believe they have a wrought iron fence. They have a road and a sidewalk and then the trail. Mm -hmm. The point was that they were in a setback. Right, yeah, not regardless of the setbacks, just the fence comment. We have the split rail. I know there's been intention from our team, we'll have to talk to some water, of opening spots in the split rail so people can come from the street directly onto the trail. That's something we could do down on this section also. It would be great. If the developer determines or mm -hmm. decides to remove that fence, we could allow access. I think we would support that um, as a committee. As Claire mentioned, you know, when we this is a section we did restore. We're about to 
finish the last section. The goal of that project is to open it up, allow you know, an enriched habitat quality and improve the hydraulics, but also to provide additional you know, walking paths and transportation routes for residents, like Claire said, to Elsie Allen High School and eventually out to Hearn Huts. It's not, if you compare it to Santa Rosa Creek Trail and the Greenway, there's not as much foot traffic, but we do have residents every time I'm out there that I see walking. And as the adjacent development is completed and this one, we expect and hope that more residents will actively use the trail. So I think leaving it open could provide that opportunity for residents. Um, as Claire said, this is not a hot spot for encampments from our experience. I've only been here for two years, so I can only speak to two years. Um, so I think those are our main comments is that the goal is to, as we design these features and restoration projects is to you know, encourage the community to use the pathways more as they start to fill in and develop these areas. Thank you. Yeah. Others? I think, are you feeling like we have given enough direction? I, I, I think I'm hoping you feel like you've given enough direction. Um, yeah, so uh, just again, to summarize, um, a locked or coded gate, um, multiple gates if possible, but you're in favor of keeping the fence? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, become, I'm personally becoming convinced we may not need to have a fence that's six feet high. Um, what do you think? I think Kyle's input is very valuable, yeah. but it's also a moment in time. Right. Yeah. Yes. By the way, there was a huge encampment in the eucalyptus grove you know, that, um, that's on our property <coughs> mm -hmm. that we cleaned out oh, up there a year ago. On the side, on the other side of the property, but I'm not facing the It's actually on our property. The, there's a eucalyptus grove. Yeah, they were there for a long time, and we finally got them removed. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a moving issue. Yeah, yeah. Really. it will never be in one place at you no. know constantly. So, you know, if if I were living there, I would the even though I mean you can hop over a fence if that's what you're inclined to do. Having a fence with a coated lock, I think that that you can see through, right? Is it is a it's a safety thing. Yeah, I can understand that. I can understand having that. It would, I, would, I would love to not have it be there. I'd love for that central park that is lovely in the development to take the place of those parking spots. Mm -hmm. You know, to have that be the area yeah. that people are walking toward, not parking in their car and walking away from. Um, but you know, I, I'm a developer, you know, and you know, this is a different lens than planning commission, right? This is a this is from the creek. What we're charged with is making sure that development on the creek enhances, protects the creek. So I, I think a lock gate is a real disincentive for people to want to even go through either direction. You have to take your keys with you to get back into your development. No, it's coded. No, it's coded. But then you have to remove the code. You don't know if you have to code. 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 I, I don't know. And it, to me, one for that whole length of, one gate for that whole length of previous yeah. two feet. It should be, here's the gate. There should be, you know, something welcoming you to the creek. Um, so I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about the fence issue, but the, the gates too, they don't really have to be six feet tall, be four feet tall. I don't know. I don't think, I think this notion of um, fearing is a little overblown. It's not right here where we have constant encampments and we have a six foot fence. Or is it eight? When did we find one? Six. Mm -hmm. Is it just six? I have a bit of a disclaimer. I went out to the side, I never got out of my car. I could not find parking. It was oh, not real comfortable for me. Usually I go and I will walk the entire neighborhood and get a feel for it. This is my feel for your project, which is not adequate. And this is, yeah, let's try like a... but this is <laughs> any other project. I would have said, oh yeah, I was on the other side of that fence. I was, I was part of this rather than, uh, 
outside observer. I am. I did not give your project the attention it deserves simply because I could not get boots on the ground for your project. Okay. Yeah, that's not good access, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in the past, we have at times uh, for projects that are hard to access, um, gone with the staff, uh, property owner, and um, seen that from the side of the, from an angle that gives a little more understanding of parcel. So that's something to consider. Now, did anybody walk, walk the parcel? Uh, yeah, I looked at it. Limited, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a ton of parking, but, but you can find it. So there's a lot of construction going on around there too. Yeah, I, living it, it, not too far from, from the project. Um, and by the way, I like that, that, that development you did north of, north of this one. It looks really nice. Um, I, would, I would probably want to have a gate if I lived there, just because there's enough, yeah, the homeless encampment and the eucalyptus trees. If you go a little bit west from there, there are RVs parked along there, that stretch, and they come and go. Some of them seem to remain forever, but 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 more come and go. So there's enough kind of street presence there. I think I would probably be more comfortable with it with a with a coated gate or uh, gate. several gates. Yeah, and and, and, and you're adjacent to the high school too, so you got high school kids walking. And a six foot fence. Six foot, I think, is you know, yeah, you can hop over it, but it's a little bit of a deterrent. You can see those. Yeah, you know, there are different uh, nuances to these yeah. discussions. And we review projects all over town, and they're all different. So, mm -hmm. and we've improved a lot of fences over the years, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, may I say may. that? Yeah. Um, I, I want to follow up on something Terry said again. Um, and that is uh, clearly in the development, in the, in the plans that we were presenting, there's a very strong idea about this green space in the middle that's a, um, a that's for the people who live there. It's built, it's, it's designed for them. It's designed to give them a place to, to come out and be in something that isn't a building and isn't a parking lot or a street. And, and, I, and I'm, so Terry was saying, suppose that was actually along the creek, right? I mean, the idea is already there. But that, and I, and I do understand, because I am a designer, in fact, that, that we're asking like, oh, it's almost like start over. You pull out your yellow trace and put it on the top and say, what if we just do, you know, you move those pieces all around. Um, but that's the kind of thing that we are looking for on Waterways Advisory, that idea that we, that the creek is the thing that, that I can use as the developer to pull the people in this small community, they're thrown together. They don't know each other, um, but they might meet each other and they have this wonderful thing. And that's what we so thank you, Terry, for even mentioning it. Yes. This is what they're looking out at. They're very close to Bellevue <clears throat> Road. I, I, I don't, that's, that's, that's not so, but it's not helpful. I actually need to, I don't know, like, yeah. I mean, the other thing, yeah. Then we can get into how, and then like to present to people like us who, you know, like you, we need um, the images that are of the, of people enjoying the creek coming out of their townhomes. <laughs> that would convince us. Well, that, could, I mean, if we move the Central Park feature along the creek, that's possible, but the problem is, um, the rest of the site. I I, I, I under I understand. No, I, I really I really do understand, and I'm saying, and and you and it's not a five minute thing. It's yeah. it's not a two day thing. It's a oh let me just let me just let me let me spend five days on this. Just imagining that this is the most important. But the park site is a. I was trying to say the park site is a is for the project and paid for by the project. It's not a city park, right. I'd say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh you know, we got, I, we got that, we got that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so even if I put it along the creek, then I would definitely want the fence. Right, right, right. with the multiple gates. Sure, 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 sure. Because it's not a city sure, sure. park. Right, right. Yeah. Right. You don't want yeah, people like coming off of the trail. Yeah. Yep, no, I, no problem with that. I'm just, I'm saying that, you, you know, it, it would be worth it spending a, uh, 
few days, just imagining that as the important thing. And you may, and you know, your designers may say, couldn't make it work, couldn't make it work. The best we could do is this. But they might say, oh man, you know, like if that really is the important thing, and then we move the roads, we move the parking here and we, we move it. It might be different, mm-hmm. worth, worth the effort. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it, but I, I'd, lo- I'd love to see that effort. Well, I'm sure you have a surplus of ideas coming forth here. <laughs> We've done our best. I don't know that there are any more comments for the committee that we have, but we can talk it through quite well. This is not a final vote kind of situation. No, just yeah. you know, yeah. um, we are an advisory. Uh, so, Susie, where are we here? Is, or do you have? Well, a- I'd I'd like to provide a summary to make sure that we're capturing it all, and mm-hmm. and we'll go ahead and and send it over to you all. Um, so, uh, do you want to do that? You want me to do that? Um, sure. Well, I think that's going to be really important to me is defining that setback. Um, I yeah. I can say is with three, absolute it certainty it's 30, it's 30 feet and parking and driveway and street are not allowed in that 30 feet. So it's going to require some of these. Yeah. 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 Um, there is currently not a lot of interface with the creek. Um, make creek integration more seamless. The creek should be seen as an asset and worked into the design of the development would be drawn to the creek side units. Units should be closer to the creek and facing the creek with specifically with windows facing the creek. Um, maybe multiple gates without locks to allow access or with locks, there, there's some disagreement. Um, and picnic areas maybe along the creek, balconies, uh, low shrubs with tall trees as to not block the views. Um, is there any way to put the central park where the parking spots currently are and um, overall to make the creek an amenity to the public? Is there anything I missed? Yeah. No? Yes. Got it. Quite good. Yeah. If you could add in um, how much we appreciate the native plants that are part of the landscape. And depending on the um, central park um, and how that's designed, that may be allowed if it's not paved in the uh, creek setback area. Huh. So that so may be sidewalks s- or anything. Yeah. So exactly yeah. how it's designed. Yeah. So no sidewalk. No but sidewalk. Yeah. What about DG? De- decomposed granite. Decomposed granite I, is allowed in the creek that's setback area. Point. Pathways are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and pedest- actually, yeah, pedestrian pathways, which can be paved, are well, allowed is, in the creek is, setback. We do it all the time. Is park type stuff allowed? I think I think we could. We'll look into it. I think like this. It, it's more. Is there any possible? It more has to process. do with the pave the paved area. I think is and the is, material that yeah. the paving material. So we'll look at it. I think that that's something that we can definitely look at. Okay, and I'll verify. I don't want to give you any clear direction here. I can't read and <laughs> read the code at the same time, but I think that that may be a solution to consider. A thought to consider, not a solution. Thanks, Susan. Anyway. We want to thank you for yeah. your yeah, you. um, attendance and your participation. I'm happy to work with you in the future. Okay, well. Thanks for the feedback. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. If, if we have to revisit this, would it is it possible to have a committee meeting on site? Yeah, so. It will so they they well. filled the requirement to come to the waterways advisory, which, which is why I was really pushing for suggestions. And I think we've got some real good ones. Um, so they, they will not be coming back to the Water Advisory Committee. We, we have seen projects, though, come back. I know, and it's past. raised a lot of discussion in-house. So mm-hmm. there is there, we, it's not something that we do typically. Um, 
And I, I, there's a couple of comments that I want to throw out just to put everybody's the, the project that where they fulfilled the concept design review at um, the design review board. Also, that project looked significantly different than what you saw today. Significantly. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's concept design review. That's what, you know, it's putting a X, you know, 60 okay. unit residential attached units next to the creek, you know, then um, the, the project where staff raised safety concerns was a different site yeah. plan as well. And, and I, I, were, I was one of those people who chimed in and I agree. I still think that design presented some safety issues to get to an end unit you know, at two o'clock in the morning and homeless people aren't the, and homeless encampments, frankly, sometimes I'd feel safer with the homeless encampments than some other people that might be lurking on a creek trail late at night. That's so, a form of eyes on the creek. Yeah. 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 Well, it is a form of eyes on the creek in, for sure. In the creek. <laughs> in the creek. <laughs> but, but, and it's that person walking, but you know, with the gate and stuff. So, I mean, I just, I just, there's, there's a, a what you saw today was not the plan that staff commented on in terms of safety. Um, there was no parking there, you know, there was, and it was right up near the Creek. It's shifted back. So there's just keep the, I mean, every step of the way, he's like, he said, he's going back to the drawing board and he will for this. And, and then the project that's next door, I want to say, I, I think there was an affordability um, component um, so two things happened. I think the creek setback, there was a meander added into the creek. And I texted uh, Monet Shikali, who was the, um, the planner and doesn't miss a beat, generally speaking. And she, um, she said that it did come to the Waterways Advisory Committee a long time ago. That was a project that was in the making for years. So several of you may not have been on the board, but some of you very likely were. Um, and I can, I'll find that information, but it, she said, she just sent me a quick note and it says, because of that, there, because of that meeting and comments from the committee here, um, there was a meander, there was some sort of a restoration or something happened with the Creek. So I don't know the details. I'm happy to get them to you. That's great. Thank so, you so yeah. You know, I, I wonder if at some point we should have a little more of a, a bigger discussion about this because this situation is complicated. You know, mm -hmm. he's been twice to different boards. Yeah. He's gotten different messages. And if I were him, I'd be pretty frustrated. And so I'm thinking maybe we just need to have a little more of a workshop kind of yeah, workshop. Uh, idea where we look at, well, what are the, where should the fences be? Where should the landscaping be? How much is that back? Do we want to see along creeks and what's appropriate in terms of what is in there? Because the questions come up regularly. This is not the first time, it's hundredth time, but um, you know, I kind of felt bad for him sitting there. Piggybacking so. on that, the presentation that he gave, he could have given to any committee. It was exactly. not designed for the Waterways exactly. Committee. Yeah, was, and I don't yeah. know if that was intentional or not, but it added to the time we need to, to spend here that we're using valuable staff time. Could staff have said, this isn't what they're gonna wanna see you need, to, that's that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see the visualization of the fence, the creek, all of that, that pertains specifically to this committee. I, and I, I'm, I'm going to read what I wrote down, which is essentially what Carol uh, just said. Ask planning to prepare applicants for the Waterways Advisory Committee and tell them the reason that we exist, because they're coming here, that you, not just to check a box, did you see the water, but be, we exist because the city cares about developers caring about the creek and creeks and what it means for the people who will ultimately live there. So, but like they did, they didn't seem to know that they were they and the drawings were not for us, yeah. absolutely not for us. And some of the plans we see are so specific for the creek yeah. that are a delight, an absolute well, that's delight, true. and others are like they're just trying to shove this through. Mm -hmm. We can absolutely ask them to address it. Can we, I mean, we, we require that they do their own presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and, but that, you know, we, that's the best we can do. We can't, uh, you know, give, sure. give us that elevation so that people understand. I think if, if staff had asked that and it's not something we have asked in the past, 
But if staff had asked us, I'm sure they would have put something together. Um, we can ask that they uh, provide that elevation going forward with the, um, when we go to design review and, I don't know, does this, does this have to go to the planning commission as well? I think it does, yeah, because yes, it's got to go for a map, yeah. yeah. So for the map, and so it can go to both the design review board and the planning commission with um, uh, a request for an elevation. A perspective. That, that it's south. A, it, it's a perspective and an elevation. Rendering. We'll get a rendering. Thank you. Yeah. Rendering would be yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Not just an elevation, not just a rendered right. elevation. No, I understand Thank what you, what you yeah. want to see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Rendering, I misspoke, so. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, but we'll work on this. And and the other thing too is, so it, when a project comes in, um, there's a requirement to do these, these you know, neighborhood meeting, concept design review, uh, concept review with waterways advisory committee, depending on the, the location and or the cultural heritage board, depending again on the location. So when we have those requirements, um, they don't always happen in the same order. But what I'm thinking is if the um, if a, a concept design review has already occurred at another board, it might be worthwhile. Uh, we can provide that information and you all can can um, look it up and, and watch the video, actually. That's so um, yeah, that's wondering what the design I, review board said. Yeah. But I was reading this. Yeah. 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 I, I and that that thought came to pass. Yeah. One of the things that I saw in Nor's presentation was that um, they they also commented on how it interacts with the creek. Um, so but so based on their comments and based on your comments today, Nor can better do her job and say, OK, this is what I need going forward. And when they come back with another design, um, does it does it check your boxes? OK, yeah. and, and if it doesn't, why doesn't it? Yeah. You know, is the, the fact that they have to meet as they have to meet the center point on the uh, density requirements, so losing units, but does that mean they can't reduce the size of units? And the first, the first iteration that staff saw um, on this project looks nothing like right. what came back here. Mm -hmm. uh, the first iteration, the second iteration is what the safety issue was raised. Mm -hmm. This is the third that we've right. seen since the design review. I, I liked your suggestion about the park being located by the creek, and it could be in the setback. That wasn't my yes. suggestion. That Terry, came from somebody yeah. over there. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah, okay. But I already yeah. had it written down. Just <laughs> you know, it's just, I, I'm noticing that it, it's interesting. You know, because we get these in front of planning, these you know developments, and um, the one thing that everyone does is when when the development interfaces with city um, streets, for example. Mm -hmm. They show an, an overview of how this development and what the street facing elevations are going to look like. Mm -hmm. And they show, hey, look, our development is in concert with the existing area. And here's a street and we're going to be planting these things along the street. Why not do the same thing for the creek? creek, creek how is it that the development talks about how it's going to interface with the city street, but not how it's going to interface with the city creek? I will say that I, I think generally they do, but where the plans aren't at the point where they're done yet, mm -hmm. um, and they're not that far. They're, I mean, again, it's concept here. Um, we'll make sure that they have that that uh, rendering and that yeah yeah, yeah visual explanation yeah. when they come a when, lot on set. But yeah. but generally speaking, at concept meetings, you are not going to see those renderings. Yeah. Okay, that's just too early in the game. Sure. Um, but it's, it's yeah. I, I understand that. I, I also wonder how much information they get when they walk in about what the creek plan mm -hmm. um, includes and what should guide them in their planning regarding the creek. I like being involved in the concept review part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but if I were them, I'd want to know, well, what are the expectations of this creek plan? Mm -hmm. I don't know that they know. Um, anyway, I don't know how the communication goes directly between staff and the yeah. developers. But yeah. and, and that would be early. Early. Right? You'd right want away. them to have an understanding of the creek plan. Well, I would want it as a developer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, because 
because he's got to go back to the drawing board now. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. it had it been an important part. Well, I don't know how does that I, work. He, he he would have probably had to go back to the drawing I, board. I don't I don't think that um, part being you know when Nora and I had that discussion prior to the meeting. But these are the plans. This is where it is now. This is what's yeah. before you again. What's before you is a multifamily housing um, community uh, mm -hmm. that's right next to the creek. So, you know, really looking for your comments. They, I, he, Jay Ryder is a very seasoned housing developer. Does that mean he's done a lot of development right on the water? right on the creek? Mm -hmm. Probably not. I'm looking, the, I've been involved in his other projects and they're nice looking projects, right. very livable and, and what have you. But um, yeah, it's not adjacent to the creek. Yeah. So there is, there's a learning curve for everybody. Now, as far as staff's concerned, we have, we are a unlimited staff. We have a lot of new staff at the counters, planners, et cetera. So, you know, it's all a learning, it's a learning sure. curve and, and coming to you folks, we, we learn some more. I've, I have never, I've been doing this since 2006, except for a four year stint over with my friends in the water department, <laughs> but, but, and I have never asked for a rendering from the Creek at concept review. Mm -hmm. We can ask, we can't require, we can yeah, recommend, sure. we can't require. It would be helpful. Yeah. yeah. And thank, thank you for keeping, discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Like, thank ahead. you for keeping us on track i'm we so were, sorry no it was know. it's good very welcomed when we started going down well they did this <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. so thank you for like you know <laughs> and, I, and i i hope i wasn't rude and i no, no, we no. know that we've got that cannery tour coming up and i'm right yes no and we're court, we're 15 minutes early so. there we go <laughs> and, and all we need now is for you to adjourn the meeting wait, wait, wait. and that's oh, 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 oh. except agenda item carol Excuse me. Future agenda item. Mm -hmm. I've asked before um, a review of some of the projects that we have looked at yeah, over right. the last, what do you want, five years? Mm -hmm. uh, you'd see them for the first time. I know the one mm -hmm. out Mission and uh, Highway 12, the storage unit mm -hmm. project. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. um, where are we with the medical yeah. office building? It would be wonderful for us to refresh mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. with an update, even I if it's there is no update. I'm happy to do that. If you, uh, I guess um, I can trying to think logistically how I'm going to do that. I guess I could go back and look at some um, some uh, agendas. Um, I just don't know when yeah. I'm going to have time. If right. and I know exactly. I can give you the update right now mm -hmm. on the uh, 4224 Sonoma Highway because I worked with them and they came. But that was the housing. With the storage unit. Eyes on the creek. Eyes, I know. I loved that housing project, by the way. I just want to say oh, I thought it was a really nice interface with the creek. They really did put a lot of eyes on the creek, mm -hmm. but it couldn't pencil out. So they came back with um, the hope of doing more storage units, which mm -hmm. they went through. They jumped through some hoops to get that design to where it would be. The oh, planning commission denied their variance. So that, um, that site is right now I don't it's it's not quite finished and it's something that I'm totally aware of and trying to get it finished they owe us some trees mm. we need to get rid of some rebar um yeah there's some there's issues out there but it's people are aware of it um but it's it the, the subdivision made it very difficult to produce anything didn't they actually sell the uh the land after the permits were I don't I, I saw it for sale I it was for sale and they tried they worked with several developers that was just conversations that I had with the property owner I, mean, I don't know who owns it now. it would be lovely to hear to get follow-up even if it's just still cotton red tape or still looking for funding just to refresh my memory you want specific great. projects think, brought back or are you thinking just everything that we I think whatever Susie up. can handle well I and it won't just be Susie I'm going to get some help on this, but I, I, I'm curious. What I'd like is for maybe the, the committee to think about projects that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. That project it, it is unentitled now, the one that you're there. The, it's unentitled. There is nothing proposed there. Mm -hmm. the, the entitlements have expired. It was a cell phone to, uh, tower over right on, the um, off of Bluebell. Mm -hmm. The church that they're going to build a 
cross on a steep hill. Oh, yeah. I think that's there. already there. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah. It Over is, on the corner yeah. of Farmers? Yeah. And for, yeah. The yeah. medical Farmers office building on Brookwood, it was, they, we, they did a very good job. Oh, that was marvelous. I yeah. wish every presentation was mm -hmm. like that. They're right. they're involved. They're they're uh, going through the building permit process yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. They had to modify their design because of their parking garage, but oh. um, they had some issues with uh, um, structural issues. So they had to go mm -hmm. back to the design review board and get a modified design. But okay. they're in building permit review for demolition mm -hmm. and construction. And how about Old Stony Point Road? The encampment? No, oh, there, there was, was a, a project development. Could that built? Was it? I, I think Stony that Point, or I Stony think Flats. Stony, Stony Flats. I believe yeah. Stony Flats is either. I think they're they're occupying. I, but I don't know that. I don't know that the Stony, the housing encampment over, um, is all fenced off, to the tune of about a three hundred thousand mm. dollar fence. That was a huge cleanup. Huge. Um, I think what something that might be helpful for you all to hear about, and I may ask her, she did a presentation for planning yesterday, Kelly Kuykendall from our housing um, or our homeless services. She's like my hero. Um, <laughs> um, I, 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 if you'd be interested in having a guest speaker, I think sure. that she would be really mm -hmm. nice to hear from. So um, you guys would enjoy it. Yeah. Good idea. Anyway, okay. so uh, and anything else for me? I, again, That's let's uh, moving yeah, forward. If there are projects that you want to know about, um, if I I don't I don't know that we need to agendize those. Um, if you prepare me before the meeting, sure. I can give you the best I've got. Um, I'm nosy, so I know I do know a lot of them, but I don't know all of them. I don't know the status of the cell tower, um, but uh, I, my guess is that they are. It's probably already there. I don't. I don't go up to Bluebell Bell very often. Kevin, well, just on that central, we, it sounds like it's relatively unanimous about moving that central parkway in this project out toward the creek. I wouldn't necessarily support that myself, just so I get to get on the record that maybe we're not unanimous. If if those, if my kids were playing outside my unit and I lived in this complex, I would want them in the center of the unit where there are eyes on the kids, yeah. not way off next to the creek. I just think we're not there yet as a city where there's enough presence on the creeks to make that safe. But one could do both. The, 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 and that's like... I am thinking like a designer right now. And, okay, I, and, and I'm just saying, <clears throat> if the priority is this, and so I have to move some of that, but I still want this ability for like this lovely town square, but it's mm -hmm. just not gonna, it's not the major town square that's gonna be empty most of the time. It's gonna be smaller. It's gonna be a little playground or something. Sounds There's like lots good. of ways to do it. Good, okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good, good alternative. Could be a little picnic area too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway, I, I think the other thing that I'm going to put on agenda for all of us is just a kind of a training so that we know when, you know, the order of the meeting um, and what when we should be talking about stuff. Um, and I think I probably just giving you all those updates in hindsight, and I probably should have waited and agendized it, but I'm going to weigh in on, I don't know with uh, with an advisory committee, if it's as strict as it is with our design review board or our planning commission. So what, are you, what is the thing you're the, doing? The correct? protocols there are that we don't talk about it if it's not on the agenda and no. we don't accept comments after the applicant's gone and the agenda item is done and what have you. So that, that's the protocols there. Committee member herding cats. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay. So, okay. to you, Steve. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> so.